could they do something like, uh, uh, I read a, a term, mental rape? And the idea of one of these crimes would be in, in that kind of environment, you know, used with uh, a satellite with for audio and visual. Could uh, scientists, writers, uh, military people, et cetera, have their intellectual property like their plans or their, or their theories or whatever, their, their papers, be stolen? And, yeah, uh, and that's uh, another problem with this technology. Uh, in the last chapter of my book, I go through a lot of the current laws and how they have to be rewritten because the very idea of intellectual properties is now uh, defunct. If you can steal someone's property, although I think they were probably, in the term of mental rape, uh, thinking of more severe actions. I mean, literally... Uh, th there is one simulated rape from an interview of a woman that I did. Uh, and so you can cause the same mental harm, trauma to the psyche in a simulated fashion as you can in a physical fashion. Okay, uh, folks out there. And we, and we, and we are seeing that, Jeff. I, I, I oh. have heard from a lot of victims, female victims, that do get what they call a, a stimulated rape or, you know, basically, you know, their genitals may to tingle or hurt uh, while they're being um, hit with, uh, you know, sexual assault images at the same time. That's a very yeah. common complaint among female victims. Yeah, we used to be called, you know, incubus succubus type of uh, demonic uh, activity. Now it's become electronic. You know, in other words, this all, all that sort of uh, the stuff we would call spiritual warfare has really gone high tech <laughs> and um, it, it's really you know it, it really is horrifying but let, okay this idea of mental rape is on is on the rise does that mean then that there are necessarily military ops behind the scenes could there be rapists in charge of this technology you know or having access to it then just like common criminals can they operate these satellites you have to define criminal. I, I think okay. many segments of our government operates as, <laughs> as criminals and above the law. Uh, no, the, under the George Bush administration, uh, John Yu wrote up his torture memos, and it included uh, rape and other things in there that as long as we as a country do it without taking pleasure in it, then it's not considered part of torture. So I, my guess is that they're getting around the law that way. Um, and no, I don't think the common, uh, you know, criminal has access to this. I, I think they're quite trained. Okay, because see, there's a there's a okay there's a little debate on that because because there's been some uh, some information you know out there that uh, you know the criminal groups have been able to access somehow through their computers by getting hacked codes or whatever, these satellites, and using them for their own uh, nefarious activities. But you're saying that's probably unlikely. It's, it's unlikely. Well, the CIA has hired uh, the mafia in the past to try to kill Castro. They're very much uh, utilize each other's networks. Uh, but I don't see what the common criminal has to gain by wasting their time torturing, you know, random people, basically. John, and, and what's the your other, take on it? Well, my take on it is kind of like what you said. I mean, it depends on how you define criminal. And one of the things that worries me uh, in society right now is we're at a point now where we have more people in the private sector with top-secret clearances. You know, that most of our intelligence services are being farmed out now, being contracted out to private companies. These are people that got their training in one government agency or another, still maintaining their clearance, but working for, you know, uh, for private intelligence gathering companies. One of them is based here out of San Antonio called Mantec, mm -hmm. and it's well, well known that they did purchase Igor Smirnoff's uh, technology uh, through a third-party company, and they're based right here. So I mean, it's, a, it's a real fine line between what, what you call, you know, legitimate experimentation or experimentation by the government and, and criminals accessing it, because these people are still criminals, but they're criminals that have a top-secret clearance. So... That that end of it, I can see where you could say, it, yes, it has gotten into criminal hands, but these are criminals that were, were government trained and still have clearances. Yeah, a guy like Adolf Hitler today, where he used to hire uh, Tibetan remote viewers to go in and uh, try to get information on the enemy or invade and try to kill them remotely. 
just think how much fun he'd be having with all this if he were around today. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's it's uh, it, it's, it's it's just it, it is, my feeling is we're at the beginning, not not toward the end. What do you think? Do you, it, to me, it seems like this is just gearing up more and more. I mean, I started dealing with this subject, you know, the technology of it a few years ago. And over all of those years, every year thereafter, it increased. And are we still increasing? And how do you see the future of uh, psychotomy? Yeah, absolutely. This is a technology that's not going away. Look, one of the whole points uh, of writing the book that I did, and I have another one coming out, uh, that gets into the physics and, and details of uh, the sciences of mind control and cybernetics. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a technology that's going to be more disruptive to the human race and culture than uh, you know the internet, airplanes, or cars combined. Uh, it's uh, it's not going away. It's actually a species changer, uh, and oh. so they it's. Uh, Unfortunately, this is our future, and it's uh, the whole point is to get it out of the wrong hands. Right now, what, we always use technology for warfare and spying and, and, and advantage first. Then the technology can be used for good, and there are many medical purposes for the technology. Technology is neutral, and it's just right now it's being used in such an evil way that we, we are really afraid of the technology. But there can always be controls over it, uh, like nuclear weapons. It can be regulated. But okay. uh, it's, yeah, it's uh, not going away. Every year it's increased, but now every year I have more and more, uh, I'm in contact with more and more TIs, targeted individuals. And um, just after, uh, uh, John, after we did our last uh, interview, I met some, some more that were coming forth. And uh, then I became aware that there are networks out there of TIs, of survivors. And like you said, from every walk of life, basically old, young, you know, the age doesn't seem to matter either. Uh, okay, if someone finds out or thinks that they're a targeted individual, what, what should they do? What's the first step? Well, they should contact uh, yeah. one of the organizations out there. Uh, Freedom from covert harassment and surveillance. Uh, join some support groups. Get some information before they act. Because if they're going to go down the same pathway of trickery that almost every TI goes through, they go to their local police. Well, the police, they don't know anything about it. They're not going to do anything. They'll go to the FBI. They'll get the same response. Uh, and so they need to know what works and what doesn't so they don't fall for uh, the common traps. That's my advice. Okay, uh, John. I would, give, and I, would give the, I would give the same advice, uh, Zeph, because one thing, I, having, you know, um, Dr. Duncan and I both have spoke to multiple victims, and, and, and there's, a, you know, there's a certain set of programs that they use with each individual, and each individual goes down the same destructive, self-destructive pathways yeah. when they're exposed to these. And, and one of the first is that it's coming from the neighbors. So you do something crazy to your neighbors and get arrested and diagnosed. And then, you know, once you're further victimized by the psychiatric, psychiatric community, then you're, you're really heading downhill. And then the second one is that there's got to be a chip in me. And, and I, get, I get emails from people every day that, you know, well, the only way this could be happening to me is if I'm chipped. That's, that's a, actually another falsehood. Are we finding chips okay. in people? Sure we are. Is it a necessity? Absolutely not. Okay, so that brings new light to the whole abduction phenomenon because, you know, it seems to me these two things are related. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, we'll start with uh, you, uh, Dr. Duncan. What do you think? Uh, yeah, there's no doubt that uh, the, the government started using cover stories, alien cover stories. Uh, many years ago, they found them to be effective. Uh, and so these abductions that have been reported even in early in the 60s are most definitely related to this government experimentation uh, program. And they've found a way to automate it and literally ramp it up. And I think that's one reason why we're seeing more TIs it could be also that more TIs have access to the Internet, and that's uh, uh, helping people get together and, and share notes. Um, but it, it does look like it's being ramped up. Yeah, and, and um, you know, to me it looks like 
it's going more toward a societal or, or a large or, you know, span of people, you, you know, um, crowd control, the thought control of a nation type of thing. I mean, that's right. It doesn't, it's not going to just be, you know, controlling this one and that one individually. It almost seems like it's got to go nationwide or even worldwide. You know, this is more effective than normal propaganda. You can affect <laughs> people while they're sleeping and uh, working. Um, they don't even need to shut off their televisions to get uh, programming. So every country in the world, of course, uh, their goal is to herd, shepherd their people into one conformed thinking pattern. Uh, and... Uh, you know, you can look at maybe terrorism as being uh, a, a milestone to get people to maybe give up the rights, freedom of thought. we got to read everyone's brain print just to make sure they're not a terrorist. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I think it's definitely heading that direction. Yeah, yeah. once it gets out of the, uh, you, you know, the, the sort of beta testing stage, it's going, you know, it's going mainstream. You know, it's it's the pre-crime, that whole... Uh, Steven Spielberg movie. Um, what was that called, Trish? Uh, it wasn't called uh, pre-crime. Minority Report. Right, Minority Report. Okay. To me, you know, and then they were using psychics. We'll just replace those psychics with te- high technology. Mm-hmm. And and and, exactly. and and then that's the same movie, you know. And I, and I think some of these movies are kind of prophetic, in a way, as to um, you know just making predictions of where, especially science fiction. And it looks like this is one pathway they're following. But in the end of that movie. We might recall that, you know, the technology was deemed evil. Ultimately, it didn't help society. When they destroyed that whole place and, uh, and they destroyed the Department of Pre-Crime, um, you, you know, that was the solution. In other words, the good guys won then. But that, as you say, that's not going to be the solution here because this technology is not going to go away like in that movie. It's going to yeah. increase. It's, yeah, there, there's no way this is going away. The investments, uh, once you understand the, the, how large of a sample set, how much human suffering they've allowed to put into this, developing it, uh, the number of dollars, uh, there's no way they're going to give this up. And this, this is here to stay. And the, you know, the, the people in control that are, I'm sure, so seduced by its power that they rather see the human race go away before this does. Well, as the big new Brzezinski said, it's easier to uh, kill a million people than control them. I guess when he said that, uh, he wasn't taking all this into account. <laughs> and, you know what? And there, and there is good. There, this technology is not entirely bad. I mean, I, look, looking at things from a medical point of view, right. um, you know, the, the ability to maybe help with addiction, you know, help with some medical problems with it. Look at the Terry Schiavo case. You know, to determine whether that woman had conscious thought or not, you know, the doctors were having to look at EEG readings that, you know, are, that harken back to the 1950s. You know, a bunch of intelligible squiggly lines on paper that, that really are, are just about unreadable. They could have put this system on her and knew if she had conscious thought within minutes. I mean, so there, there is some good things that can come out of this technology, just as Dr. Duncan said, it's not being used in that manner. Okay. Um, right. I, I understand there's a positive aspect, but I think in a way we have to go through like a trial by fire as a, as a culture. In other words, we're going to go through this ugly time first. And uh, where we come out on the end of this ugly time, you know, it's anyone's guess. But those of you who are TIs, uh, again, uh, you know who you are. If, I guess, can I say this? If you think you are, you might, you might be. And, and what are the statistics on that? For people who think they are, how many of them turn out to actually be targeted individuals? I'm sure it's a gray scale. Uh, it, when you say targeted, it, it's often black and white. Uh, I'm sure they're, they're in the experimentation, uh, there are people we found 